Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio Detectives, where we bring to you tales from the greatest detective shows the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with 463 episodes made, broadcast on CBS Radio from 1942 to 1955, we bring to you The Whistler. Signal gasoline. Let every traffic signal remind you, you do go farther with signal gasoline. Yes, you do go farther with signal. The Signal Oil Company and your neighborhood signal dealer bring you another curious story by The Whistler. Tonight, The Deadly Innocent. I am The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Have you ever hated a man enough to kill him? No? Well, that's the kind of hate that grows with the years grows and grows into an all-consuming passion. That's the way it was with Lambert Dean. He has wanted to kill someone for 25 years. That's why he has come down to the offices of the Mammoth Construction Company at 9 o'clock at night. That's why he's chatted casually with the old night watchman who took him up in the elevator, chatting oh so casually. But he thought out every word in advance. The night watchman will remember them later, just a little later. There should be just a crack of light showing under the door of the president's office. Yes, there it is. And Lambert is going toward it. So you've never wanted to kill a man. Listen. You may get a few pointers. Hello, Joe. Huh? Oh? What are you doing here? Why did I startle you, Joe? I'm so sorry. What do you mean by busting into my office? Can't you knock? Oh, sure, Joe. I'd never think of walking into the president's office without knocking during working hours. <laughs> I didn't think it'd matter tonight. Any time I'm here is working hours. Remember that if you want to hang on to your job. Now get out. Well, don't you want to know why I came down tonight? I do not. Any fool could take care of the bookkeeping department in the daytime. If you have to work nice to keep up with simple routine, that's your lookout. Oh, I don't have to work on them. They're all fixed up, just the way I want them. I, uh, I came here to tell you about them, Joe. Well, you can keep it. The books will wait till tomorrow. Better listen now, if you want to hear it at all. How many times have I got to tell you to get... What do you mean, better listen? Tomorrow will be too late. You'd better listen, Joe. Yeah, maybe I had. What are you up to? Anything wrong with the books? (laughs) Ha, ha. You're a smart guy, Joe. You always were. Even back when you were a kid in knickers. Oh, for the love of Pete, if you're going to start raking up past history... The sooner you let me talk, the sooner you'll get it over with. Well, if you've got anything to say, say it. My time's valuable. Is it? (laughs) Yes, you were smart, making up to me when we were kids. You were my pal. You looked after me. Never let anybody bully me. Uh, Your dad had dough. Mine didn't. Uh Uh-huh. It was worth having you hung around my neck if it got me the kind of life I wanted. And it did, didn't it? Pretty soon, you just about moved in on us. When I went to college, Dad sent you, too. Good, kind Joe Carson, who always looked after poor little me. All right, all right, so you finally tumbled to it. What of it? When Dad got wiped out and we had to leave school and hunt work, you didn't drop me. I'm no fool. You still belonged on the right side of the tracks. You knew the folks that counted. Sure, Joe, sure, you were smart. I knew the men with the jobs to give. I found out about old Jennings needing a bookkeeper down here at Mammoth. Only when I got around to applying, they already had a new bookkeeper. You. Well, if you were dope enough to tell me about it, you deserved what you got. 
Maybe I wouldn't have seen the future in a piddling little bookkeeping job if you hadn't run off with the mouth about that, too. I'm going to be the bright young man who catches Jennings' eye, Joe. I'm going to marry Betsy Jennings. Someday I'll own Mammoth, lock, stock, and barrel. You haven't got Mammoth yet, smart guy. No, just all the rest. Give me time. Old man Jennings is on his last legs, and you know it. Now get out. You're fired. Haven't you forgotten the books, Joe? I'll check them by myself. Now out. No. Get out or I'll... No, I'm not going. You are. What? This is the end of the line for you, Joe. Tomorrow, I'll move into your office. Pretty soon, I'll move into your house with Betty. Before long, I'll own Mammoth. (laughs) You're crazy. Like a fox. I'm going to kill you, Joe. Signal goes as far as before the war. Yes, Signal gasoline still goes as far as before the war. But how can it, I hear you asking? How can it when certain gasoline ingredients are reserved for war? Well, that's what I want to tell you. You see, it's true. Certain of the more volatile ingredients, such as isopentane, have been reserved for war. That's why Signal Oil Company is frank to admit no gasoline today can promise you all the pep and anti-knock performance you found in pre-war Signal gasoline and which you'll be enjoying again in even further improved Signal post-war gasoline. But when it comes to mileage, that's another story. For today's Signal formula contains not only all the high-energy components that gave pre-war Signal its superior mileage, but in addition, new hydrocarbons rich in mileage have been added. That's why it's a fact. The famous Signal formula still places the emphasis on mileage. That's why it's just as true today as it was before the war. You do go farther with Signal Gasoline. And now, back to the Whistler. They say even the humblest worm will turn if you step on him hard enough. You didn't think of that, did you, Joe Carson, when you used your pal for a stepladder, stole his job, his girl, the life he planned. You weren't quite smart enough. You're alone in your office now with the night pressing around you, alone with the turned worm. He's going to kill you, Joe. Sit down, Joe. Drop that gun, you crazy fool. Sit down. That's better. Wouldn't like you to be uncomfortable. You've got a nice, easy chair to die in, Joe. The president's chair. Now, Lamb. Lamb, listen. Let's talk this thing over. Hmm. We're both businessmen. Maybe we can make a deal. (laughs) When old man Jennings kicks off, there'll be plenty for both of us. Now, come on, put down that gun. Put down this gun? Why, Joe, I like it. Feels good in the hand. A sweet gun, Joe. The day you bought it, you signed your death warrant. You know that? Would you like to know about it? That's right, Lambert. Tell Joe about it. Don't let him die without knowing how smart you've been for a change. Remind him of the day Mr. Jennings retired from the business. The day Joe put that gun in his desk drawer and bragged that the payroll would be safe. Joe's own gun in Joe's own desk with Mr. Jennings for a witness. Convenient, wasn't it? But don't stop there. Tell him your whole plan. Tell him about that day two months ago when you started on your careful, deadly trail. <coughs> Hello, Mr. Dean. Have a good lunch? Uh, no, not very, I'm afraid. Nothing seems to agree with me these days. Uh, you may go to your own lunch now, Miss Neal. Okay. If you ask me, your stomach would be a lot better off without all those pills you keep stuffing down your neck. I was not aware that I'd asked you, Miss Neal. Well, it's your stomach. Bye. Back soon. Uh, Miss Neal, hmm? have you seen my tablets? They don't seem to be in my pocket. I'm sure I had them this morning. I remember taking a couple when I got to the office. Oh, sure I've seen them. You left them on the water cooler. Uh, Big boy Carson raised Kane about it when he went out to eat. Say, what's he got against you anyhow? Against me? Oh, you must be mistaken, Miss Neal. Joe was my friend. We were boyhood friends. Then why is he always taking on you and yelling at you? Looks to me like he wants to run you out of here. Only he doesn't dare as long as the old man's alive. Miss Neal, I cannot allow you to speak like that about my friend. 
Now that Mr. Carson is in sole charge of the business, he's naturally under a strain. We, we must all make allowances. Oh, yeah. Here. I hid your pills under the stuff on your desk. Oh. Uh-huh. How many do you want? Two? Put out your hand. Uh, thank you. Now you sit still. I'll bring you some water. Uh, that's very... One moment. Hmm? These aren't my tablets. Why, sure they are. They're right out of your bottle. That little brown bottle you're always hauling out. See? Yes, that's my bottle, but the tablets, uh, mine were white too, but considerably smaller. I showed you one yesterday. Don't you remember? Remember one tablet from another? Oh, honest, Mr. Dean. Well, gee, you're right. Yours had some kind of trade name stamped on them. These are perfectly plain. Uh, That's... that's strange, isn't it? Somebody's playing a dirty trick on you. Probably thought it'd be a good joke to give you something that'd really upset your tummy. Why, I can't believe it. Say, there's Mr. Carson. What? Joe? That's it, I'll bet you anything. It'd be just like him. Oh, now, Miss Neal, please. (sighs) We have no proof that Mr. Carson had anything to do with this. He saw the bottle, didn't he? He yelled about it, and he hates you. You know he does. Uh, These tablets may be perfectly harmless. Harmless? Oh, golly. You don't suppose Mr. Carson would... Oh, no, 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 no. Don't let your imagination run away with you. But, Mr. Dean, he, he obviously wants to get now rid please, of you. please, Miss Neal. I forbid you to speak of this to anyone. I'm going to destroy these tablets at once, and uh, we'll forget all about it. Well, it's your funeral. But if it was me, I'd have those pills analyzed. <laughs> That's right, Lambert. That was step one along the trail leading to Joe's untimely death. But don't stop there. Before you pull the trigger, tell him the whole story. Tell him about step two. Hey, look out! Where you going, can't you? Did you see that? You all right, mister? Uh, Yes, I I think I... He didn't hit me. Boy... You got luck to burn. If you hadn't jumped like a grasshopper, that car would have made mincemeat out of you. Well, I was walking along close to the pavement. Somebody shoved me hard. Then I was out in the street in that car. Well, what do you know? Hey, I guess it could happen easy enough with all these crowds on the sidewalk. Yes, easy enough. You didn't happen to notice who was behind me. <laughs> in all that gang? Look, mister, there were dozens of people. Businessmen and ladies shopping and... Well, I thought you might have seen one special person. He... He'd be a big man, a gray hat and top coat. You'd notice him. Wait a minute. You mean that shove wasn't no accident? This guy was out to get you? Uh, I'd rather not say any more. Well, that's the way it was. Let me think. Let me think here. Seems to me I do remember a gray hat. A big man, around 45, with a red face. Yeah. Yeah, he'd have to be big to stand out in the crowd, wouldn't he? Red face. Sure, sure, I remember now. Perhaps you saw the face towering over me? Towering over you? Yeah. Oh, he must have been for me to pick him out special. Hey, that puts the fella right smack behind you. I thought so. Oh, thank you, Mr... Uh... Robinson's the name. D.L. Robinson. Robinson. Uh, you're going to report this to the police, ain't you? I could go along with you and tell them what i seen. Well, uh, not just yet. I, I can't be sure. Uh, if I was in your shoes, I wouldn't wait to be so off-fired sure. Anybody start shoving me under car? Oh, please, I... please. I'll call on you if I need you. In the meantime, perhaps you'd, you'd better have my name, too. It's Dean Lambert Dean. You remember? In in case of accident. Lambert Dean. Uh, you bet I won't forget. Darned if I could take a thing like this in my stride. Uh, if I was you, I'd be yelling for the police so loud they'd hear me in Jericho. <laughs> Nice work, Lambert. That was step two, and it was easy. All you had to do was plant an idea and watch it grow. Little Miss Neal was already sorry for you because Joe Carson kept bawling you out. Easy to make her think a few soda mint tablets might be poison, especially since you destroyed the evidence. Easy to step off the curbing into the path of a car and then convince an excited witness that you were pushed, pushed by a big florid man like Joe Carson... Only what's the motive, Lambert? Why should Joe attempt to kill you? The police will want to know. You waited, didn't you? Waited until this very afternoon when Joe Carson was out and old Mr. Jennings made one of his rare visits to the office. Come in. Well, Lambert, come in, my boy. Uh, Mr. Jennings, 
May I speak to you privately? Why, certainly. But if it's anything about the business, you'd better wait until Joe gets back. He's in charge now, you know. No, I, I, I'd rather Joe didn't know about this. Uh, not just yet, Mr. Jennings. Mr. Jennings, I shall have to ask you to treat this conversation as confidential. Very well. Mr. Jennings, I have reason to believe that two attempts have been made upon my life. What did you say? Somebody's trying to kill me, sir. I'm sure of it. Good heavens, Lambert. Yes, sir. That's just the way I felt. I couldn't believe it the first time, but it happened again. But why should anyone want to kill you? Well, there isn't any reason. Unless... Unless my death would cover up for someone else. Cover what up? Well, I got to thinking about it, Mr. Jennings. There wasn't any funny business going on around here until after you retired. I got to wondering if somebody had just waited until you were out of the way... And this afternoon, I checked over my books for the last few weeks, and I found discrepancies, sir. Discrep... You mean... Somebody has altered my figures. On several occasions, somebody's done a good job of forging my handwriting. There's a lot more money paid out than I ever handled. How much? Well, so far, I found $17,000. Who did it? Someone in the office? One of the staff? That's just it. The books are locked in the safe right here in your office. Perhaps I should say Joe's office, except when they're actually in my hands. Then it had to be someone who knew the combination of the safe. Well, now you can see why somebody wanted me out of the way, can't you? These altered figures look like mine. If I died, uh, you wouldn't hunt any further, you see. Every, everybody would believe that I took the money, gambled it away, and committed suicide. Someone who knew the combination. Uh, no one knew it except you and me and Joe... That's clear enough for me. What are you going to do? I'm going to call the police. This is my company. Whoever steals from me will pay for it, even if it's a member of my own family. Uh, Mr. Jennings, you promised to keep this confidential. You can't expect me to keep a thing like this to myself. But you can't afford to make a mistake. It might not be the uh, person we think. No. No, I wouldn't want to. What shall I do, Lambert? Leave it to me, sir. I've got an appointment tonight with the person. If he did it, I'll get the proof. You're going to see him alone? Yes, sir. Well, that could be dangerous. You say he's already tried to kill you twice? I know, but I've got to clear my name, sir. If if anything should go wrong, I've written the whole thing down for you. The attempts on my life, the names of the people who were with me at the time, the altered books, and... Here, here, sir. I thought if you'd put it in your personal lock compartment in the safe, it would give you the whole story. To be opened in case of my death. Lambert, the risk, I can't let you... Don't worry about me, sir. I can take care of myself. If you'll just give me the keys to your compartment. The safe's already open. Very well. Take them, Lambert. Put the letter there yourself. I I think I'll rest a few minutes before I go home. Mr. Jennings, it's a shock to him to find out his son-in-law is a thief. You forged a fine, strong chain of circumstantial evidence, haven't you, Lambert? Just one more link and you'll be ready to kill. You won't overlook that last link, will you? Not a careful man like you, Lambert. Uh, evening, Mr. Dean. Uh, you working late tonight, too? Uh, good evening, Bill. Well, not exactly working. I have an appointment... Uh, Mr. Carson here, yes? Yeah? Yep, yep. Took him up about a half hour ago. Uh, come on over to the elevator. I'll ride you up. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'd uh, sure steer clear of Mr. Carson tonight, though, if I was you. Why? Why, he told me plain as a whistle he didn't want nobody coming near him. Didn't want anybody to come near him except me. Uh, Look here, Mr. Dean. You don't mean... There's been some mighty funny talk going around this building. Talk? That little Miss Neal that works in your bookkeeping department, she's been spreading it around about somebody wanting to bump you off. Of course, I didn't pay no mind to her at the time. Her women always... Bill. Bill, I want you to do something for me. Why, sure, Mr. Dean. It's a warm night. The window in Mr. Carson's office on the second floor will probably be open. Uh, now, you stay in your cubbyhole on the first floor and keep your window open, too. If you hear anything, well, out of the way... Don't you worry. I'll get up there so fast you can't see me for dust. No, no. Call the police. <laughs> you want to get killed, too? Killed? Me? Oh, Mr. Dean... Now, now, you'll be all right if you do as I say. 
Get the police here if you hear anything funny. Yes, sir, Mr. Dean. Oh, sure. Now, well, take me up to the second floor. Yes, sir. Don't forget, Bill. I'll be glued to my window, Mr. Dean. right, Lambert. Now you've done it. Now you've told Joe the whole story right up to this minute. Well, it's almost time to pull the trigger, Lambert. But don't be in too much of a hurry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you are, Joe. That's the whole story. The watchman's waiting downstairs right now. I worked the whole thing out, as you can see. Why, you... You framed me. That's a smart boy, right the first time. <laughs> Uh, why don't you congratulate me? You ought to appreciate smart work. I never stole anything. Just my job, my girl, my whole life. I came up here to check the bids. I didn't make any appointment with you. Who's going to believe that? You plan to kill me. You could claim you discovered a shortage. That when you accused me, I went for you. You had to shoot me in self-defense. But, Lamb, I didn't. I never... Only you won't be around to put in a claim. Old Bill is going to hear something, all right. Just one shot. Just <laughs> one. When the police get here, they'll find you dead. I accused you, Joe, you see? You went for your gun, and I went for you. In the tussle, the gun went off. <laughs> so sorry, Joe. Oh, you're crazy. You're crazy, Lamb. Am I? Well, somebody's going to run the business after your uh, regrettable demise. I've been here nearly as long as you have. Who knows it better than me? Somebody's sure to console your widow one of these days. I've known her since I was a kid. I'm stepping into your shoes, Joe. Now... Wait. Wait, Lamb. Listen to me. That letter. You're counting on that? Oh, uh, yes. I'm a careful man. Now, Lamb, the police won't find that letter. It's gone. And you haven't got a case without that letter. Ah, oh, come on, bright boy. Can't you do better than that? But I tell you, it's gone. I destroyed it. I found it tonight. In old man Jennings' compartment? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. But I've got a key to it. He had it made for me when he stopped working. Look, Lamb, I'll show you. Keep your hands out of your pockets. Oh, I only want to show you. I've got it right here. Keep your hands up. I want you. Right here in my pocket. <gasps> uh, did you think you could kid me, Joe? Think you could stop me with that cock and bull story? Well, why don't you answer, Joe? Through talking for good? I'd better get a move on. It'll be a minute or two before the police get here, but I want to be sure. Gun right beside him. Won't matter if my prints are on a two, we tussle for it. Let's see now. His pockets. Now, what was he going for in his pockets? If he had another gun, better make sure. Keys. He was going after his keys. No, no, no. Don't get excited. <clears throat> he couldn't have had the key to Mr. Jennings' compartment. He couldn't. This one. It can't be. But it looks... If that letter's gone, it, it can't be the key. But it is. The key to Mr. Jennings' locked compartment in the safe. And what about the letter, Lambert? Did Joe find it and destroy it? Take oh, it left. easy, Lambert. Don't get so excited. right. Fifteen left. Thirty-five right. Five left. Now, the compartment... It won't fit. The key won't... It does. Well, get it open. Get it open. It's gone. Oh, I put it right on top and it isn't there. Maybe slid down behind the other stuff. It isn't here. Oh, yes, Lambert. The letter's gone. But there's no reason to get so excited. It doesn't matter. You've still got a case. You've planted the evidence very carefully. Don't lose your head, Lambert. You think your case will sound funny without the letter to back it up? You're getting more upset the more you think of it. And the police will be here any minute. Watch out, you'll ruin everything you've built up so carefully. But you can't see that, can you? Wait, Lambert, wait. Hey, look, there 
he goes. Out of my way. Hey, you. Stop. The, the fire escape. He's getting away down the fire escape. Come on, Fred. Okay. Stop or I'll shoot. Can you see him? Not halfway. Get your flashlight on him. Yeah. How's that? Okay. Stop, I tell you. Get him, Fred. <laughs> The Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending of tonight's story. Meantime, a question for you drivers. Does your windshield look different lately? Has something new been added? <laughs> I'm talking about the new 1945 Federal Use Stamp. It's time for it, you know. And it's also time to pick up one of Signal's free use stamp protectors if you want to be sure of getting yours. Signal Oil Company had these neat, transparent little shields made up to protect your use stamp from moisture and scuffing, so it will stay on without peeling through a whole year of wear and window washing. Every car needs one. But like all things in wartime, quantities are naturally limited. And that's why I'd suggest that you get yours this week, tomorrow if possible. Just drive into any of the friendly stations displaying Signal's yellow and black circle sign and say, I'd like one of Signal's use stamp protectors that was offered free on the Whistler. And now, back to the Whistler. So Lambert's revenge wasn't complete. He killed Joe. But he himself was killed by the police when he ran from them. He'd counted on that letter to prove he'd killed Joe in self-defense. When the letter was gone, he lost his head. You see, the unexpected had happened. It so frequently does. In murders. Remember that when you think you'd like to kill somebody. Poor Lambert. If he'd only had a minute to think. Oh, we're through with the books, Mr. Jennings. The figures had been tampered with? Sure, the original figures have been changed. We talked to the witnesses, too. That girl in your office, the fellow that witnessed the street accident, and your watchman. I guess there isn't much doubt about what happened. There is none to my mind. Lambert must have accused Joe of theft. Perhaps he was even unwise enough to tell Joe about the letter he had left in my care. Lambert was a good man, a responsible man, but mentally a little slow. Yeah, the way I figure it, Carson knew the game was up. He must have got the drop on Mr. Dean and held him up while he got set for a getaway. Oh, the safe was open and the stuff in your private box was scattered all over the place. I kept money for my personal use there. Sometimes fairly large sums. Joe knew it. I'd had a key made for him so that he could bring me cash from time to time when I was unable to get to the office. Well, I can understand Carson's death. That was an accident when they fought over the gun. What I don't get is why Lambert Dean ran out on us. I don't like shooting down innocent men. You mustn't blame yourself. You couldn't have known. As I said, Lambert was not quick. I suppose he thought he could not prove Joe had attacked him. Oh, we might not have either, without that letter. Yes, it's a fortunate thing I remembered that Joe had the key to my compartment. Of course, I removed the letter at once and took it home with me. A very fortunate thing. Otherwise, we might never have known what happened. Next Monday at 9 o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories and by your neighborhood Signal dealer. This program, directed by George W. Allen, with tonight's story by Sally Thorson, music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Marvin Miller speaking and suggesting that you let every traffic signal remind you that you do go farther with signal gasoline. Yes, you do go farther with signal. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.
That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.